World Wetlands Day is celebrated on the 2nd of February every year. It is the day when the Ramsar Convention for Wetlands was signed. This year, it's all about wetland restoration. Let's look at why wetlands are important to us, how they can be restored, and what part can the common person play. Let's start off. So what exactly are wetlands? Wetlands are land areas that are saturated or flooded with water either permanently or seasonally. Now there are many types of wetlands. Some of them include inland wetlands, which are composed of marshes, lakes, rivers, floodplains and swamps. We also have coastal wetlands such as saltwater marshes, estuaries, mangroves, lagoons and coral reefs. And finally there are some human-made wetlands as well. These include fish ponds, rice paddies and salt pans. Now why is it that we need to restore wetlands? Wetlands are being lost three times faster than forests. This makes them the world's most threatened ecosystem. More than 80% of all wetlands have disappeared since the 1700s and this trend is accelerating. Since 1970, at least 35% of wetlands have been lost. Now why are they being lost? The reason is that human activities are driving degradation of wetlands. Wetlands are being drained and filled in for crops, grazing and construction. Water pollution and overfishing are harming wetland ecosystems along with the rise of invasive species in their habitat. Wetland species are also facing extinction. One in three freshwater species and 25% of all wetland species face extinction from wetland decline. 81% of inland species and 36% of coastal and marine wetland species have declined in the past 50 years. It turns out that wetlands are vital for humanity and yet we destroy them. Fresh water is rare and wetlands provide most of it. 2.5% of land on Earth is freshwater, which is mostly stored in glaciers and aquifers. Less than 1% of it is usable, and over 30% of that is found in wetlands, such as rivers and lakes. Another important aspect of wetlands is that they store more carbon than forests. Peatlands cover 3% of our planet and yet store around 30% of all land-based carbon. Coastal wetlands like mangroves sequester and store carbon up to 55 times faster than tropical rainforests. Wetlands also help us cope with storms and flooding. 60% of humanity lives and works in coastal areas, salt marshes, mangroves, seagrass beds and coral reefs are wetlands that shield coastal communities. And when there are, wherever there are inland wetlands, a single acre of wetland can absorb up to 1.5 million gallons of flood water. Wetlands give livelihoods to 1 billion and feed 3.5 billion. More than a billion people live from fishing aquaculture and tourism, and wetland paddies provide rice for up to 3.5 billion people. So as you can see, wetland restoration is an urgent matter. So what are the best ways to approach this particular problem? We need to follow seven best practices when it comes to wetland restoration. The first of them is to restore multiple benefits. 
natural wetlands provide many services, from flood control to livelihoods. So our aim is to recapture multiple benefits, without concentrating on just one or two. Try to restore them so that they can fulfill multiple benefits. The second practice is to create a self-sustaining wetland. Wetland vegetation, wildlife and the site itself all draw from and give to each other. We need to aim to recreate this complex self-sustaining cycle. The next practice is to involve the community. Ensure that residents and businesses in the area have a voice in planning and implementing the restoration. Give them a role in maintaining the restored site. Number four is to limit the causes of degradation. Remove or limit pressures that affect the area, such as over-harvesting of water or pollution. Number five is to clean up the degraded area. We need to remove any debris, trash and waste that has accumulated in the wetland over time. Then we have to restore the native flora and fauna, recreate the original hydrological conditions and replant native vegetation, reintroduce wildlife and weed out any invasive species. Structure access to the wetland, the final practice. Create specific spaces for people to access the wetland. List which activities are allowed where. Designate zones where wildlife can thrive undisturbed. Why is restoring wetlands a worthwhile concept? Restored wetlands bring us seven key benefits. Number one, revive biodiversity. 40% of the world's species live or breed in wetlands. Restoring them powers the local food chain and attracts wildlife. Number two, replenish and filter water supply. Wetlands naturally filter water, remove pollutants and boost the local water supply. Wetlands store carbon. Specific types of wetlands, especially peatlands, mangroves, intertidal marshes and seagrass beds are exceptionally efficient carbon sinks. Wetlands also blunt the impact of floods and storms. Restored wetlands can act as sponges against excess rainfall and flooding, buffer coastal storm surges and can shield communities in extreme weather. Wetlands also improve livelihoods. Wetlands create livelihoods in fishing and aquaculture and also provide goods such as reeds and grasses. These opportunities often benefit indigenous populations. Boost ecotourism. A restored wetland can be a sustainable magnet for visitors, a natural attraction that draws tourists along with opportunities to serve them. And finally, enhance quality of life. Revitalized wetlands provide a place to relax, experience nature, and enjoy a sense of satisfaction at their resurgence. Now, how can a person get involved or contribute towards wetland restoration? First of all, people need to make personal conscious choices that minimize the loss and degradation of wetlands. Learn more about wetlands. Become aware of the major threats to this valuable ecosystem such as drainage, pollution from waste and chemicals, and invasive species. Make water-friendly and ecosystem-conscious decisions. Use water sparingly. Adopt a diet with less environmental impact. Avoid using toxic products that could flow into wetlands. Don't dump waste or rubbish in wetlands. Make your own pledge to act for wetland restoration. The Wall of Pledges is a great place to post your conscious choices, persuasive voices and bold actions for wetland restoration. Persuasive Voices 
become a wetland champion, advocate for protecting local wetlands and for restoring degraded ones. Use your social media outreach to maximize awareness of wetlands. Highlight World Wetlands Day on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and other social media platforms. Use the hashtags Generation Restoration, hashtag for wetlands or hashtag World Wetlands Day. Take a wetlands field trip to see where restoration is needed. Once on site, consider what the wetland does for the area and whether it's degraded. Host a talk to support wetland restoration. An educational event can help build support for restoring a local wetland. Call on wetland experts, local people who make their livings in wetlands to underline why restoration is important. And finally, create bold actions. Do bold actions. Use your own power to create change and support wetland restoration locally, regionally, or nationally. Hold or join a public wetlands cleanup day. Remove debris, trash, and waste that has accumulated in the wetland. Get directly involved in a local wetland restoration project. Get input and help ensure that the restoration efforts reflect the needs of residents. Add your event to the global map and search directory. Our online interactive map shows what events are taking place and where around the world for World Wetlands Day. Share a photo of your bold actions on the restoration photo gallery. This photo gallery aims to show where restoration is happening around the world to motivate and inspire more restoration efforts. To learn more about World Wetlands Day, please visit the website www.worldwetlandsday.org. Remember that the restoration of the world's wetlands is in your hands.